I'm pleased to talk to this wonderful looking, energetic, lively audience, and I will do my best to uh, tell you what I know about the culture wars. Let me begin uh, by, by making the obvious point that we have all now become accustomed to seeing Americans shouting at each other, sometimes literally across barricades, uh, about health care legislation, about immigration reform. We have come to hear constant talk about the polarization in the nation, conservatives versus liberals, Democrats versus Republicans, Fox News versus MSNBC. This is not new. The intensity of the debate is not new. The idea that there's division is not new. But in the not so distant past, when Americans thought of themselves as divided, as surely we always have, how were we divided? By race, by ethnicity, by religion, perhaps even by region of the country, but not in ideological or partisan terms, right? And we certainly in the past would not have thought of an, of an American society experiencing a culture war. Now, the idea of the culture wars is very scary. It's a more frightening concept than the concept of simple political division. Why? If the culture is at stake, if it's your very way of life that's at issue, you can't compromise. This is not like other issues in politics where compromise is seemingly always possible. So how did we get here? Well, I hate to drag out what's become almost a cliche. It's all the 1960s, but it is. That is, think about what happened in the famous or infamous, depending on your perspective, 1960s. When there was a young group of people questioning, challenging traditional values and practices, what happened? They were dubbed very quickly the counterculture, right? Now, unlike the mainstream in American society whose respect for authorities remained high, who loved their religions, who were attached to the free enterprise system, who valued the traditional family and sexual morality, here were these young people challenging all of that. And they were the counterculture. Well, what happened over time? Over time, a lot of their ideas seeped almost imperceptibly into the larger American culture. Others got ignored. I don't think there are many people out there now establishing communes, um, which was one of the things the counterculture did. But many of their values, many of their attitudes did become, in effect, part of the mainstream. But what really remains, in a way, from the counterculture is the very idea that culture is contested. That there is a culture and a counterculture means that culture is something we have arguments about, that we dispute. This is very different. This is very new. When in the 1920s, for example, there were young people acting in much the same way that the counterculture did in the 1960s. But what did people say about that, their behavior? Eh, it was the wildness of youth, period. And, and the depression came along at the end of the 20s and the wildness kind of disappeared. In the case of the counterculture, it waned a little bit in the late 1970s. But by the beginning of the 1980s, we had what was known as the new right. 
Ronald Reagan is, of course, elected president in 1980, and a new right emerges, which engages in very strong campaigns against abortion, against gay rights, for prayer in the schools. And by the early 1990s, we begin to perceive a culture war. The term, to my knowledge, was actually first used by a sociologist. Me. Uh, a sociologist of religion with the name of James Davison Hunter published a book in 1991 called Culture Wars. But in all honesty, I think the fame of the title Culture Wars much though I would love to see one of my colleagues get credit, probably comes from 1992 when the phrase was used by Patrick Buchanan in a speech to the Republican National Convention. Pat Buchanan said the United States was undergoing a cultural war, quote, a struggle for the soul of America. What was in that, according to Pat Buchanan? Abortion, homosexuality, school choice, and what he called radical feminism. After 1992, the idea of the culture war became a, con a, a staple of contemporary journalism. All over the press, every dispute, got absorbed into the notion that the U.S. was now in a culture war. What did this mean? As Hunter described the culture war, there were people devoted to the notion that there is absolute morality, at, there are absolute moral truths. And then there are people on the other side devoted to the notion that morality resides in our own individual judgment, that we decide what is or isn't moral. So the first group called the Orthodox, the second group called the Progressives, were at war with each other. And as Hunter perceived this, in any group, any social class, race, gender, religion, political party, even church, there was a split between the Orthodox and the Progressives. So the culture war ran straight through the culture. The image portrayed in the press of the culture war was conservatives, liberals, Republicans, Democrats, an image of those who were devoted to morality and duty on the one side and those devoted to individualism, individual self-expression on the other. So there we have it, two armed camps. Well two camps. By 1994, actually, when James um, Hunter publishes his next book, he's actually perceiving them as armed camps. His 1994 book, which is published directly after the Culture Wars book, is called Before the Shooting Begins. So he meant it. Okay. Meanwhile, social scientists armed with data um, can't find support for the image of the two camps. If you go out and you look at mountains of survey data that we now have, it is very difficult to find people who are consistently on one side or another of the divide. Even on the really, really hot button issues like abortion and same-sex marriage, very, very small proportions of Americans are consistently on one side or the other. In fact, survey researchers often say that if you look at what the most prominent response to abortion issues is, it's really, it depends. Okay? That, that is, it's not always right or always wrong, but rather, it depends. Okay, so there is the scarcity of clear patterns there. Even if there are people absolutely consistent on those issues, 
they may not all agree on all the other issues in the two camps, on school prayer, for example, or censoring popular culture or other culture war issues. 